Hello everyone, today I'm going to be sharing all of my secrets for how I built an escape room for my biology class. So whether you're a teacher who's looking to do something similar for their science class or somebody who's a student who may just want to build an escape room as a class project one day, this video might be interesting to you. If you don't know what an escape room is, they boomed in popularity in the early 2010s as a recreational activity. And escape rooms or breakout experiences are team building or collaborative group exercises where you go and pay to be put in a room for or usually about an hour to solve puzzles to try to escape. Sometimes there's hidden rooms on top of other hidden rooms and puzzles and UV lights and obviously for many reasons that I won't get into now, there's no way I would ever lock students in a room to do a class activity. But the ticking clock and the team building and critical thinking and collaboration that goes into an escape room can be really good for a classroom activity. So that's why I decided to do it in the biology classroom. I will say it's also really important to keep your learning objectives in mind if you're designing an escape room. So as you're thinking about doing one for your class, think about what sort of activities or puzzles that you could create from content in your class. Mine was done with the topic of protein synthesis, which involves transcription and translation, going from DNA to RNA and then RNA to your amino acid chain. So there was a lot of coding and decoding already involved in the unit materials. So in this video, I'm going to go through how I structure the escape room for my students, what I tell my students, how to solve it, and then tips I have for designing your own escape room for your classes. So here we go. So my students sit at large lab group tables of about four to five. This makes it easy so that each table can be one competing team and all the tables are competing against each other working towards the same goal. Like I said before, I'm not locking students in a room. Instead, they're trying to unlock one thing, which is our skeleton, I'll get to you in a little bit. Whichever team or table finishes first will be the winners for the class. And this escape room was easy enough for me to set up that we could do second, third, fourth places. In previous years, I've also had students competing against other periods and the table group with the fastest time was the overall winner of the escape room that day. So how it starts is I have students working in their teams at each individual lab table, my skeleton locked up on the front, and then I have an old set of principles of life textbook. You can really use any old biology textbook and these are really there as distractor clues. They're not super important to solving the puzzles, but I like having these in the room because it helps get students up and out of their seats and thinking a little bit outside of the box about what other clues could be involved in trying to solve these puzzles. So I start by framing the activity and asking students if they've ever done any escape room or breakout experiences before. Students like to share some of the cooler ones that they've done, and I give about five minutes for students to talk about their prior experiences. Usually there's at least one person in the class who's done an escape room with an experience to share. Even if none of your students have ever tried this before, it's still a good way to start, and you can talk about your own experiences doing an escape room if you've ever done one. So in most escape rooms, you start with a story, and ours is a little convoluted, but here we go. So we have Dr. Stu Mata, if you get the pun, you're probably a biologist. He's a friendly, paranoid plant scientist, and he's about to submit his research to a prestigious journal. His rival is Dr. Monty Oxide. He's very mean and cruel. So what I do is I have our school skeleton locked up with my own personal bike lock on a chair in the classroom. The students walk in the period and see this poor skeleton gagged and tied up. Uh, I usually put goggles or a silly hat on him and they get excited knowing that it's something to do with the lesson for that day. So having that initial experience is really good for the escape room. So I tell the students, Dr. Stu Mata has been drugged, gagged and locked up by none other than Dr. Oxide. You, his lab assistants must help Dr. Mata escape. But to distract you from going straight to the police, Dr. Oxide has hidden the code to unlock Dr. Mata's restraints and it's up to you to find it. But that's not all. Dr. Dr. Mata's plant research on a plant mutant gene is ready to be published, and Dr. Mata is up against a deadline. You, his lab assistants, must help him submit his research to the American Journal of Plant Research before the time is up. If you're lucky, you might just be able to help him escape too. So out of that, I remind students that there are two main goals here. The first is to submit Dr. Mata's research before the deadline. This is the ticking clock they'll give, usually about 30 minutes, and that's a good duration for this particular escape room. And their second goal is to free Dr. Mata. If they accomplish both goals before the time runs out, they win or are able to escape the breakout challenge. Then I remind students of the following guidelines. They are allowed to use their phones. In fact, it's actually necessary that somebody in the group has a phone so that they can scan a QR QR code at some point during the escape room. I don't tell them about the QR code in advance, but I let them know phones are okay. I tell them their laptops are okay, code on charts are okay, but mostly they just need their brains and teamwork to solve the puzzles that Dr. Mata has hidden in his files. 
all of the clues that they will need are at their tables, except for a few materials that they can find on tables around the room. I tell them I don't have anything hidden inside drawers or underneath lab equipment, and this encourages students to get up and moving, but prevents them from making too much of a mess in the lab room. And I remind them to not let the other teams know what they're up to because they're in competition with the other tables and other classes. Remember, if they submit the research and free Dr. Motto with time left, they will win, and they also have hint cards within their files, and unused hint cards will deduct time in case of a tiebreaker between classes. So what do students get at their tables to start this escape room challenge? Well, like I said, I have a stack of old Principles of Life textbooks on one side of the room that they can access if they want, and there's actually a distractor clue that goes to those books if they feel like grabbing it. And then they get a file folder that says Dr. Motto's secret files on it. In the file folder, the first thing they'll find is a cut up picture of Arabidopsis stomata. And if they put that picture together in a puzzle, on the back, there is a QR code that will lead them to one of their first main challenges of the escape room. There's also a few sticky notes with handwritten words on them. Some of them are distractor clues. There's also a handwritten note photocopied in each file folder from Dr. Mata, two hint cards per table in case they need to use a hint from you if they get stuck at any point, and then some sheets with some particular tasks and things that they'll need to decode during the escape room. There's no directions on where to start or which activities are the most important, and it's up to students to figure out what they need to do first in order to find the research, submit it to the journal, and then find the code to unlock Dr. Mata. Dr. Mata's letter reads, Dear lowly lab assistants, my rival is trying to sabotage my research. I just know it. If anything happens to me, or if I'm unable to submit my important work by the deadline, you will have to submit it for me. You will need my scientist passcode, a secret number I have hidden in my files based on the mutated amino acid I have found in my research. Next, you'll need to submit the title correctly. This I have hidden in my files, just a little jumbled. Finally, the link to my files is found in a secret spot under cover in my lab. In case anything happens, I'm counting on you, Dr. Mata. The last thing I will tell you that I do not tell my students is that there is one more material that I have set up and that's an envelope that's stuck underneath at least one chair per table in the biology room. Inside the envelope is a strip of paper that has a URL on it, which will be helpful in the end part of the escape room. Students usually don't find this until the very end of the escape room challenge, unless they've done an escape room before, and those students tend to look under tables and chairs earlier on. It's okay if they find it early, but it is one of the harder clues and the one students get stuck on longer. I give the students the files, I remind them of their goals to submit Dr. Mata's research before the deadline and to free Dr. Mata, and then I set the timer. Usually I put a escape room music or some sort of amazing race soundtrack on in the background. This helps up the anticipation and get students talking to each other at the beginning. And it's very exciting once everything gets going. I'll show you a few highlights of what this looks like in my classroom. As you can see, students are working hard together and trying to solve these puzzles, even though they aren't sure which order they're supposed to go in and how they're supposed to get to the journal research or to the code. A lot of collaboration happens, and I would say groups of four or five are ideal deal for this challenge. Any fewer and it becomes a lot of work, any more and there's students sitting with nothing to do. But there are enough activities where multiple students can be working at the same time on different things to get to their goals, which is why one of the reasons I really enjoy escape rooms is because everyone can get involved and it's not just one person doing all the work. If students are successful, they will be able to find the research, find the passcode, and then rush to the bike lock, restraining Dr. Mata, and actually physically taking him out of the chair before the time is up. It's really fun to see students when they solve this, they cheer, they're excited, but I can easily put him back in the chair and relock the lock if any other groups want to try for second or third place. Usually I stop it after one or two groups have solved the puzzle and then we do a recap where we talk about how to solve the puzzle and I swear students to secrecy for my next classes. The only other important thing is to make sure you reset the escape room if you have multiple periods in a day that'll be doing this. The most important thing is to replace the envelopes under the chairs, recycle papers that they wrote on because you don't want other students seeing any of their work, and bringing all of their materials up front. I check the file folders very quickly to make sure there's nothing that needs replacing, and then I distribute any prizes to the winning team. 
I also remind students to not give out hints because they are in competition with the other classes and they don't want to see other people solving the puzzles faster than they did. All right, so if you're a teacher and you want to know exactly how this particular escape room works, keep watching from here on out and I'm going to give you the details. If you just want to skip to the end and hear about some general tips for designing escape rooms for your classes, that's great too. I'll put that in the chapters below so you can find your way there. So remember, at each file or at each table, there should be an envelope with the URL under the chair. There should be hint cards. There should be the stomata puzzle, descriptive sheets, which I'll show you in a moment. And if you're a teacher that wants to use an escape room similar to this or to use my resources to build your own, I'll have a form linked in the description of this video and you can submit that form and I'll share the materials with you that I use to build this escape room. I have a few sticky notes with distractor hints and then of course the handwritten note from Dr. Mata. Students can also use a code on chart if they have one on hand, or you may want to print some out to have them available in the room. The principles of life text are any other old biology textbook that you want to direct students to. And of course the internet and their phones with a camera if you have students with access to these during the school day. So the very first step is to make sure students solve that stomata puzzle, flip it over, and then scan the QR code that will take them to the journal submission site. Some students flip it over first and try to solve the QR code. That's okay too. If they're not using the stomata picture, it's all right. The main goal is that they get to the American Journal of Plant Research submissions. From here, it asks for a three-digit scientist passcode number in order to proceed. Well, they have a few hints for how to get here, and one of the sheets in their folders says Dr. Mata has chosen a passcode number matching the amino acid in its work that causes his protein of study the most harm. Students need to find the number of the mutated amino acid in the gene sequence that Dr. Mata is studying. Once they've found that, they should be able to advance to the next page on the form, and it asks for the title of their journal article for review. That part is on another sheet of paper, Dr. Mata says, I have hidden it in a secret strand of DNA with my own codons. So students are asked to transcribe this DNA strand into mRNA and then to find the codons that match with each of these words to create the title for his research. That should lead us to the correct title, which allows us to go to the next page of the form asking for the URL for the article. Again, this is the hardest part, but this is the part that hidden undercover in his lab. Each table should have a chair with an envelope and that secret URL is hidden inside the envelope. The URL actually will go to a fake journal article with information about a particular mutant Arabidopsis, but all students need is the actual URL to advance to the final step. Once they get to the final step, they're given a confirmation code and this will help them unlock Dr. Mata from the bike lock up front. Now, as students are working really hard, you're allowed to give them hints or other distractor clues, but try to avoid getting too involved in each of the team's work. It's interesting to see how students problem solve and what protein synthesis skills they apply to which part of these challenges and how they work through the mystery to get to the goals in mind. If you're designing your own escape room, start with your end goal in mind. What do you want students to be able to do at the very end to win or to finish the escape room? Some teachers like to use a lockbox and trying to get important materials out of a lockbox. It's helpful to have an actual physical goal though because then it makes it more tangible for the student and a lot more exciting and interesting. Unlocking Dr. Stu Mata with my bike lock was easy because I had a pretty heavy duty bike lock and the skeleton that was easy to set up for this particular activity. You could borrow another science teacher and use a live actor as part of your escape rooms too, or find something else that students will need to do with a particular code to get at the very end of the escape. Make sure you know and use your learning objectives. What do you want students to be able to do out of this escape room? It shouldn't be done just for fun. You should make sure it involves some of the topics that you are teaching in your current unit. Protein synthesis was a great way to do an escape room because there's lots of coding and decoding that happens as you go from DNA to RNA to protein. And so it was an easy way for students to apply the skills they had already learned in, in class to a fun problem solving activity. Finally, I also always want to foster critical thinking, teamwork, and communication, and those were skills that students really had to practice during the escape room process. As students get stuck or frustrated, encourage them to talk to each other or to think in a different way. It's great to add red herrings, but not too many. You don't want students getting so frustrated that they give up and shut down and not want to complete the escape challenges. You also want to think about designing for an easy setup and reset. Our class periods are very fast at my school. We are not on a block schedule, so I don't have much time between classes. So knowing I had to design an escape room that was going to be fast to clean up and set up was really key. What questions do you have about creating an escape room for your classes? If you want to do one of these, what are you thinking about? Let me know in the comments below. Give me a thumbs up if you've thought this video was helpful and thanks so much for watching. I'll see you later.